Hello, Mario. In this video, I'm going to be looking at contouring a stockpile and working out the volume using the end areas method from the actual contours themselves. So here we have our typical uh, earthworks stockpile of topsoil usually where the a motor scraper or such like has run across and deposited the topsoil generally in layers uh, not too high. Now we've gone out with our survey equipment and we've measured a series of spot heights uh, firstly around the base of the stockpile and then um, across the top in, in these here which are sort of tops of banks so we've got a batter running in these two areas here and we can drive across the top of the stockpile stockpile here so that's your fairly typical topsoil stockpile so moving on from there we can uh, what we can do now is we can create or this is what would happen in software and we can do this by hand and this is what we're requiring if we're calculating things by hand is we cut everything up into triangles or what's known as a tin a triangular irregular network and here I've um, all of the stockpiles all of the spot heights I've joined them with little light lines that you might draw up in, in pencil and then by calculating uh, just or estimating we can see where the particular contour would cut or it would cut through by using proportion um, or we can use um, there's various means of, of working out where the contour would cut this line. We know the height at this end, we know the height at that end, so we can say, well, yeah, that contour would be closer to there or that much. Or we can, in fact, or as the software does, work it out exactly. But nonetheless, we can get ourselves a, a contour like so. The thing to note here, of course, is that this contour here is slightly above the actual base and we'll, we'll deal that becomes a bit of an issue later on so let's um, just move ahead a little bit here and we'll go to the next step here and we can see here now where um, we've been able to draw in all of the contours by interpreting across between the uh, various spot heights that have been done and I have labelled the uh, contours here I remember a contour is a line of equal height so they're like slices really um, through the stockpile and we've got here from 100 through to 100 and seven so there we are we have it all nicely contoured and what have you but again you'll notice that the bottom contour is a hundred and we'll we'll see that that's a bit off the base there so let's let's just move ahead there and here we are here we are here we have our our everything contoured here with the um, and I've put spot heights here all around the base with with values on them. Now, the next step is to work out the area of each each contour, and yeah, there's various ways of doing that. You might be able to do it with a a uh, pl planimeter and work out the area. So this here's the area of, of the, and contained in the hundred contour, the 101, the 102, 103, 104, 105, and so on. So. Um, we are able to use the end area formula, the area by end area, the end areas formula, which is basically says the the distance between the the cross sections, or in this case the contours divided by two, and then we multiply that by the the first contour, which in this case is a hundred, and the last contour, which is uh, or the last section or contour in this case which is A107 and then plus two times all of the intermediate ones which would be A101 through 106 and here I have I've written in all the values and worked it out and we get a volume of 8645 cubic meters now you'll note that that is from the hundred contour but you'll see from these values around here 
that um, there's a, a little bit of material between the base and the 100 contour that we need to account for and it's not accounted for in this formula here, the end area formula. Now there is another way that we could have dealt with that and that is we could have average, found out the average um, height of the base and then create, uh, started with an index contour at that level and then moved up from there. Um, that would be another way of dealing with it but um, we'll move ahead now and uh, deal with what we've got um, here so we'll just move on to the next uh, here and what I've done here is um, I've put them around now what we've got the area of the base which is 2167 so what we can do is work out the average height um, and I've sort of added all these up, I think there's 20 of them, and divided by 20, and that gives us an average height or level of the base of 99.4, which means there's, um, on average, 0.6 of a metre between the base and the RL100 contour. So we can just do a small end area calc between the base and the RL100 contour, which was um, obviously the distance, um, would be 0 0.6 which you divide by 2 and then it's the area of the base plus um, the area of there only being two contours there so it's just the the average area essentially um, by uh, um, by the distance between them which works out to be 1263.90 so in this particular instance what I would do is take the total volume would be the 8645 that we worked out using the end area formula which is the end area or the volume between 100 and 107 um, plus the um, little bit between the base and RL100 which we've calculated here 1263.9 and so that gives us a total of 9908 0.9 cubic meters. So in this instance here, I would give a total volume. It's topsoil, so um, a little bit here or there is not going to matter too much. Uh, 9,900 cubes or meters cubed um, is what I would uh, estimate would be the the volume of that stockpile uh, that we have here. And so here it is. We've done the stockpile. We've contoured it found the area of each enclosed by each contour, then used the end area method to come up with the volume 9,900 cubes.